Hello, and welcome back to the first in the third series of the Ricky Gervais Show with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello there. And the fool, the round-headed buffoon that is Carl Pilkington. All right. We've been away filming um, our second series of extras, uh, leaving Carl to his own devices in a sweltering London. We've had a heat wave here in the capital city, haven't we, Carl? It's been all right. It's been up to 100 degrees, record-breaking temperatures. Yeah. What have you been doing, though? Uh, sort of enjoyed it a little bit, was out and about. Yeah. Getting to see the place, having loads of walks. Not I like to have walks. You know, watching what <laughs> like people Like a dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! When, when he jumps off the couch and starts <laughs> exactly. scratching against the door... Suzanne thinks it's time. <laughs> it's, <laughs> a walk. it's just good thinking time, though, isn't it? Uh, as well, having a walk. You've got no other clutter going on around you. And right. you just think about a lot of stuff. And, you know, like, like say, with the weather being hot and stuff, a lot of insects knocking about. Right. So I've just been watching them. <laughs> so, so while we've been filming a TV show, you've been watching insects. Yeah, just seeing, because everybody knows insects are out there, but no one's keeping an eye on them. <laughs> Why? <laughs> what are they up to? What are you worried <laughs> about? Well, Steve, you wouldn't be laughing like that if you'd, if you'd watch them, because they do some weird stuff and that, yeah. is what I mean. What yeah. sort of stuff? Any examples? Uh, I saw a bee have a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> you saw a bee have a heart attack? Yeah. How were you sure it was a heart attack? Because what happened, I'd, I'd been... Did it clutch its chest with all six legs? No, I'd Were there some of, other little bee paramedics? No, no, I'd, I'd just been out in the park anyway, just looking at, you know, uh, caterpillars knocking about. Uh, butterflies and stuff, so I was sort of... So, uh, when, so when Suzanne goes to work, she goes, Carl, don't you waste the day. Just because you don't work at the radio station anymore, I want you to do some constructive stuff. And you go, yeah, I am, yeah. And so you, so in your head suddenly goes... <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, he goes out... Oh, there's a moth. <laughs> but, but the thing is, so I'd been in the park and I was aware of the insects that are around us more than, like, most of the time. And I come out of the park, just crossing, like, a, a sort of a busy road and what have you, and I saw this bee to the right of me, sort of in the air, and it was a big one, and I was a bit like, oh, let's watch that. And um, it just fell. It fell from the air in front of me, and it was it... on the pavement, and I thought, oh, what's going on here? And I, I, I looked at it for a bit, and it was really still, gave it a little kick, just to see if there was any movement, nothing. Stone, sort of, what's the saying? Stone cold dead. Yeah, stone cold be dead. So yeah, uh, that, that I was... like the fact that this bee suddenly saw Carl and had a heart attack. Yeah, he'd never seen anything that round before. Yeah. it just thought it, it had approached him because he thought it was a sunflower. My right. God, it's a giant walking orange. Every dream has come true. <laughs> oh! <laughs> no, but it just summed up life for me. I thought that that's, that's like us, isn't it? At the end of the day, they have heart attacks, stress. Are you putting it down to stress, do you? Well, it's in London, isn't it? You know, everything has stresses from living here. And they are bald, aren't they? They've got fur all over, but they lose the... And always overweight. <laughs> <laughs> it was a fat, bald bee! Oh. So what did you... It fell to the floor and you, you instantly... You just kicked it, you didn't attempt no, to revive it. No, I waited a second it. and just looked at it to see if there was any, you know, leg movement or wing. And there was <laughs> nothing, and then when I sort of kicked it, it was sort of hard. It had hardened already. It's just rigor mortis had set in. Did it put you in a bad mood for the day? Because I know things like that can just send you over the edge for the day. Uh, death and that does a bit. Suzanne doesn't like me talking about death. What riveting conversations do you come up with? No, just things like uh, one of our mates has had a baby recently, and I just was saying, oh, when that's sort of our age, we'll nearly be dead. Think of that. That's the first thing he says is a new life brought into the world. <laughs> I know. But when he's our age, we'll be dead. Yeah. No, Maybe weird. they'll let you do the speech at the christening. Yeah, it's just, you know, so like I say, just just insect life and that, it's interesting. You say it's interesting, but do you care about really finding out about them? Do you really care about what bees do or as do? You look at them and you make up your own world. For example, it had a heart attack, it's stress, it's overweight. You know nothing. I could, I could probably, why don't you, why don't you look something up, you know, honeybees are fascinating, you know, uh, honeybees, they've been, they've been around making honey for a hundred million years. That's incredible. Their wings beat over 11,000 times a minute. And he's thinking, no wonder I had a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But they're fat, do you know, do you know, um, bees, like ants, are actually like specialised wasps. They're sort of, they're sort of developed from the same... 
Family. Huh? Family, like. Well, yeah. Yeah. Doesn't surprise me. Doesn't surprise you, no? Does it interest you in any way? Um, well, everything's linked to something, isn't it? It's like how they say away from monkeys and that. Yeah. It's all the same sort of thing. Yeah. Well, yeah, I've been watching loads of stuff. I've been watching Ants. You mentioned Ants. <laughs> uh, I've had a lot of moths in the house. They're sort of sad. I mean, you say it like it was a garden day. party. <laughs> no, yeah. it's, just, it's just all these things. You, you look at them. I mean, you, you go into the scientific bit saying, you know, it likes honey or whatever. Uh, it doesn't like honey. That The reason they store honey is to get them through the winter when there's not, like, nectar, or nectar's hard to get and they store it. And they store too much, which is why we can skim a little bit off the top. We're like agents. <laughs> yeah, well, but, but all I'm saying is I look at more about what its life is like. As well, no, you to... don't. You don't. You guess. You make it up. You don't look into it at all. No, but you can't... A bit of guesswork is you, you're pretty close to the truth most of the time. Why? Well, what do you mean? Well, that, 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 that state statement sums you up. A bit of guesswork is pretty close to the truth. Because if you watch something long enough, is what I'm saying, you can see that it's it's a bit clueless. It's the same way about ants or, you know, they're hard workers and all that. I watch one, it's going back and forth all the time. They go one way and then they stop and go the other way. They try to look busy in front of the mates. But if you watch one... <laughs> If you watch one long enough, it's back and forwards, and it's like it's done nothing there. I'm going to carry this twig back and forth until I can knock off it for. There's a lot of that going on. Is there? Because uh, there's not. There's none of that going on. There is. <laughs> no, like I say, the moth. Depressing little sort of thing. <laughs> Why is it depressing? Just just the way it hasn't got, it hasn't got eyes, does it? You just look at it, it, hasn't, it doesn't know what's going on. I just don't th I think if you haven't got eyes, you shouldn't have wings. <laughs> That's a rule, if we could put that into practice, please. <laughs> That's a great rule. That's a fantastic rule, isn't it? Yeah. If you haven't got eyes, you shouldn't have wings. It's certainly true of people thinking of becoming an air pilot. <laughs> ah! <laughs>
It's the mode to play. It's mental. Yeah. You see, I, I had a mate called Mark who liked playing cricket, right? And when I, when I used to say to my mum, oh, can I I'm just want to go out with Mark and his dad to play cricket? And she never used to let me go. She'd go, oh, I prefer, you know, you didn't. And I used to always think that, you know, it's, it's because it's a dangerous sport. You can get it on the head by the ball and it's hard. Put an eye out or whatever. But it was because his dad, his dad used to drive us to the place to play cricket. And he had, um, his eyelids were too big. Mm-hmm. So uh, he, he, he used to have to sort of have his head right back. <laughs> <laughs> it's like so, one of those old-fashioned dolls right, where you can yeah, lean yeah, about yeah, and yeah. clunk back yeah. and clunk forward again. And she didn't, uh, she didn't like me getting in a car with him. So it was this, his eyelids are too big. You so growing up, you had a woman who had her head like a bag of spuds. You yeah, had, I didn't know her. No, you had two kids at school with webbed hands and feet and big heads. Yeah. You had a pigeon chest boy. Nowadays, you're walking around with insects and moths like something from James and the Giant Peach. Yeah. And you had a, a bloke whose eyelids were too big. One thing I've, I've noticed, because I occasionally go to the gym, and you know those guys who work out constantly to give themselves extraordinary physiques? Just, they, you know, they're on the trip, they're on the weights, and they're really... You know, I've noticed in the summer particularly, those guys cannot wait to get their shirts off. Yeah. Everywhere you see, they're walking around. If they've got a good, good torso, they are walking shirts off. Even, I think, if you go to nightclubs, I notice there's always one guy who's thinking, well, I have put so much work into this body, I have got to get my shirt off on the dance floor. A vest, yeah. You know, it comes straight a, off. A brand new tattoo. I'm not covering that up. Exactly. I've paid a lot for it. Let's see it. Yeah, yeah. But that's what we were saying about bodies. I can't remember why we were talking about it. We've got to a point in science now that you can change your head. Right. No, well, that, that doesn't make any sense at all. It, it was a programme, and it was done in the 50s or 60s, where they stuck a, a monkey's brain on a stick and had it wired up, and it still worked, right? Right, OK. And that was in, like, the 60s or Right, whatever. OK. Well, so, to, ch- well to, to say the change your head makes no sense at all, because just, if you put a, a, a different head on a different body, you're changing the body. Yeah, I know. Well, that's what I'm about to say to you, though. What? That's what I'm saying. That I'd be more confident if... I had someone else's body, because if anyone dissed it, I can go, oh, no, it's bad, isn't it? But it's what not are you mine. talking about? Well, it's, it's like, say, um... As opposed to someone else's head? Yeah. Well, what it wouldn't be me, would it? The head is me. Well, of course it is, that's yeah. what I mean. Yeah, so what do you mean? Me. You'd be happier having someone else's body. What, than your own? What I mean is, say if, um, you're wandering about, like, for some, for some reason, there's an incident. You have to take your top off and that, and everyone's looking at you, right? And you're a bit sort of, you know, you haven't got the muscles and that, you haven't got the six pack. Right. Uh, which isn't that nice anyway. I don't know why that's become a nice thing, really, seeing the insides of you. You might as well. <laughs> I mean, I know not... I came up with the see through skin idea, but it's it's a bit weird, isn't it? You can see stuff. No, no, it's the muscle in front of the. No, it's not. Sometimes it is. You can it's, see not the, like it's not the tubes. outline of your no, organs. No, you can't see tubes. You can see tubes and veins and stuff. Well, you can see veins. Yeah, well, I don't want to see that. That's why we've got skin over it. Well, stop I mean. looking at naked men, then. Well, no, you but sometimes you can't help it because it's been hot. And it's like you say, there's people walking around with vests on and that. So anyway, what I'm saying is, say if some incident happened, I'm walking about with my top off. Right. Girls are laughing at me, right? Why? Don't know, they might. <laughs> Yeah, go on. So they wouldn't look at your body, they'd all look at your head. So so what I mean is Yeah. Rewind that, right, and imagine all that happens again, but I've I've got someone else's body. Right. Whose right? body? Uh just some fella who's died and I, and my body was injured and they said, We've got a new body in. You right. can have it. We'll yeah. stick your head on it. Yes. Yeah. Now say if, if They're laughing at you. Uh they're, they're laughing, laughing at the body. They're yeah. laughing at the body. Yeah. But at least I'd be able to sort of go, I know it's a mess, but it's not mine. At least I don't have to claim ownership. <laughs> so so all of this extraordinary technology that can make a head, put one head on another person's body, so you can go, ah, it's not my body. Oh, no. But, but it's not your own. I'm not being funny, though. So if you have a body transplant, right, and you're there, you're at home, yeah. naked, you look down, yeah. lovely penis and a set of testicles. Yeah. Right? What do you do with them? What do you mean? What am I doing with them? Well... Do you like them? Well, you wouldn't you wouldn't mess about with them as much as if they were your own. <laughs> <laughs> but if you did mess about with them, would you feel guilty that you were messing about with another man's testicles and penis? And it's the full body. Yeah. 
No, because they're not my hands either. <laughs> you're a genius! You're a fucking genius! So what you're doing is watching someone else wank. Yeah. <laughs> Well, one thing Carl has been doing over the past few months is writing his diary. He's kept that up. Um, I don't know what he's had to write about. All he's been doing is looking at moths and ants and bees and going for walks. But I'm sure it's all in the diary. So uh, let's have a look at that. Oh, I don't believe it. He's only gone and written it down. We went to the park and had a brew. Suzanne read the paper while I played with a ladybird. <laughs> I mean, it's like a child, isn't it? It's like what a child would do. Suzanne read the paper while I played with the ladybird. <laughs> His only friend is a beetle. <laughs> it climbed up my arm. It struggled on me hairs. This is in detail, then? Yeah, 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 yeah. It kept stopping every now and then and was rubbing its head with its right arm. It did it about four times and always used its right arm. It rested for about five minutes, then flew off. Sunday. I had a bit of a to-do with Suzanne because she wanted a lion today. I ate this. Once you're awake, you should get up. I got up and put the radio on really loud. She eventually got up. I told her insects don't have lions, so we shouldn't. <laughs> Why are you obsessed I with mean, insects? You must be fucking unbearable to live with. <laughs> you must be a nightmare. No, I've just started, because I've watched insects a lot, I don't want to keep going on about them because we're a bit insect heavy. But at the end of the day... If we if we copied insects, we wouldn't go far wrong. I don't know what you mean, though. One minute you're saying they're great, then the next minute you'll slag them off. Yeah, I'll slag some of them off if I don't know what they're doing, but because I've studied them a bit longer, I just think they, they do You haven't right. studied them, though. He, he thinks he's like Darwin. You, but you just slagged them off when again. Don't you think people that insects are doing stuff, they're not. It yeah, goes there, ants, then it goes back again. The ant was. The ant was messing about. But only that one, the others were carrying stuff. That's what I'm saying. The snidey ones in everything, in every everything in the world, you get a hierarchy. <laughs> oh, long words! Ooh. The bookshelf was dusty, so Suzanne asked me to dust it if I get a minute. I ended up looking at every book. <laughs> <laughs> Just the spine. Yeah. Just for a few seconds each. Yeah. Didn't open them. I looked in the dictionary to see if the word dictionary would be in the dictionary. I didn't think they would bother with it being on the front page but it was in the book as well. It's a good point, though, isn't it? No, it's not a good point, because you didn't tell us anything. Dictionary is in the dictionary. Well, of course it is. Well, why? If you, if you go, out do you spell dictionary, you look at the spine and you go, oh, there it is, D-I-C, C, and all that. <laughs> so what, is, what does dictionary mean? It's a book full of words, isn't it? That's what it means. All books are full of words, you idiot. How to spell them. And if you don't know no, what it is... No, it's not how to spell them. All right, then we'll... I'll just look up something. No, 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 no. It's not a book full of words to tell us. No. It's the meaning. Give us the, the definition of dictionary. Meaning. It's a book full of words if you want to know what the meanings are. But if you didn't know... Well, that, I'm sorry, what was that sentence? Yeah, but what I'm saying is, if you didn't know that, then you wouldn't be looking in it, because you wouldn't know the book is about that. So, if you don't know the word dictionary and what it means, you wouldn't be looking at the dictionary, you'd be looking at an A to Z. <laughs> because you Why go, leave it out, though? Just because there's so many words in the world, I, I would have thought they wanted to cram as much as they can on a page, and if dictionary is already on the front... Is that why you suddenly used the word hierarchy for the first time ever? Did you find that in there? Did you look at... Did you see hierarchy in the dictionary? I feel I that, 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 that big was. word has pushed out about 26 other more useful ones. <laughs> yeah. No, well, Suzanne's been going on about me learning another language, but I sort of think your brain has only got so much room on it. And the rest of it's filled with lard. So... <laughs> If I've got to learn everything I know, again, but in a different language, it's taking up space, isn't it? You don't learn everything. Oh, God. It's all, it's all storage, mean? isn't it? But you if don't I... have to learn it again. You don't have to learn the concepts again. You're merely Do you learning vocabulary. you know how many moves there are in the human brain? You really, you don't worry. You won't use them all up. I feel that he has reached his capacity, though. Yeah. Well, you need a, another sort of... You, you need an update. You need some more memory. Woke up to some interesting news. It's good when this happens, because it sets me up for the day ahead. If it's miserable news, it affects my day. It said on the news that they have found two new flies. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck 
fucking Al Warren sex. What have you done? Is that all you've done this summer? Bong. Just <laughs> trouble in the Middle East. Bong. Two new flies found. Ladybird climbs up arm. <laughs> they were found in the UK <laughs> and they were found close to each other. Maybe this happened because they were different than the other flies and weren't expected to hang about together, so that's why they knocked about with each other. That would happen, wouldn't it? What do you mean? There's two new flies. <laughs> what do you mean? Does it mean there are two new flies that are a different species? species? Yeah, two new species and they found them close to each other, right? Yeah, but they, they didn't mean there was one of each. No. Yeah, yeah, they did. They found two different ones. No. No, they have. Seriously, I know that. That's right. That's a fact. So you've got like, I don't know the names of them. They give them odd names, don't they? Well, say <laughs> yeah. you call it A and Fly B, right? Yeah. Fly A, I don't know. Was uh, say that's orange. <laughs> this is just B. Fly B, yeah. No, this is but, painful. No, but this I'm is just painful. making it easier but for Fly B wears okay. a little hat. He's got a little hat. Right, yeah, fine. Now, they found the orange one. I went, look at this over here. Which is a bit weird. And they've gone, oh, that's a new species. Log it, whatever. Mm. And then the other one went, oh, 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 keep your pen handy. Look at this one, it's got a hat on. So then they, they found them both within the same distance. I don't know what that sentence means. Keep going, keep going, keep going. They, no, found, let him both, finish. they I, found them both within the same both, distance. But without <laughs> interrupting him, let him finish this, no. this point. Let me just make one thing clear. Carl Pilkin just said, they found them both within the same distance. Think of that! Don't know what it means, but go on, let him finish this, this point. So, so what I mean is, they weren't knocking about with other normal houseflies, because they were probably sort of going, oh, he's a bit weird. Leave it. <laughs> Yet, because the other one was also odd, they're, not, they're hanging about with each other. Don't you understand that? Why is that such an odd yeah. concept? Because you think, you think of it as like, two little... Um, uh, new kids in school. Yeah. They, they find out they're both new and they, they've got something in yeah, common. They're both, they're both goths. So yeah. they start hanging out together. Yeah. Uh, and this was on the news, was it? Yeah, just on the radio, yeah. I know if I looked into that story, it would be 90% wrong. Bit tired today because didn't get to sleep as early as I wanted due to a moth getting in the bedroom. Fuck <laughs> me! I got it in a glass and looked at it for a bit and then let it go because Suzanne wanted to go to sleep. Looked up some interesting news. Some people dug up an old body in Ireland. Turns out it's well old and was here when dinosaurs were here. The really weird bit is it had hair gel in its hair. Right, what is it? A fella. Well, no, it wasn't around when dinosaurs were here then. Just a bit after. Right, fine. A lot after, yeah, go on. It's I think any hominid, anything that could even be linked to anything that may become man is only about a million years old and I think Homo sapiens is probably only about 150,000 years old. Dinosaurs are about 150 million to, to 250 million. Yeah, yeah, no, it's not the age bit, that's amazing. It's the fact of, there's a fella, won't have even had shoes on his feet. Right. And yeah, he was worried about his hairstyle. Right, well that's definitely not true either. This is unbelievable. Well, there was a man on the radio doing poetry, says Carl in his diary. I thought I'd have a go at doing a poem about today. <clears throat> not really. He had, Steve, I'm, I'm a little bit queasy. He hasn't really written a poem. He's written a, a small poem. No, he hasn't really. Yes. If moths had eyes... <laughs> Fuck me! <laughs> let, let me read the poem, OK? <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. You wouldn't interrupt T.S. Eliot. Okay, 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 okay. Oh, okay. If moths had eyes, would they be happier? How do they know they're not dead? <laughs> Cavemen hunting for food, but not before they style the hair on their head. <laughs> what would last longer in dinosaur times? A blind man didn't stand a chance. Not with all them rocks about. I'd rather be a blind moth. Right. Like, it may be the greatest poem no, ever written. Just, just, you know, dissecting it briefly, you attempt to rhyme in the first four lines, but abandon the rhyming system in the last three. Is there a creative decision can have, for that? Can we have Carl read that? By Sorry. Means, yeah. just, uh, no, just, just you read it as you would like to. So this is... Uh, Imagine this, right? Okay. This is going out all over the world, this this podcast. And now, um, Carl Pilgrim, a new poet from Manchester, now living in uh, London, England, would like to read a, a poem. 
if moths had eyes, would they be happier? <laughs> How do they know they're not dead? Cavemen on in for food, but not before they style the air on their head. <sighs> what would last longer in dinosaur times? A blind man didn't stand a chance. Not with all them rocks about. I'd rather be a blind moth. <laughs> you said it as though the last one was going to rhyme. <laughs> I said it like it was going to rhyme. Oh, God. No, I it's think, amazing. I think, it's I, amazing. I, I, think he feels, I think he feels as though the final line, I'd rather be a blind moth, is going to be one of those great... You know, there's it, a summation that somehow the moth is a metaphor. I'd the caveman. Be a blind no, but there's no I'm metaphor doing, in that. He really does mean he'd, he'd rather, rather be, be a blind, blind moth. moth. Yeah, well, I'm just because I've looked at the day's news. Can we always do that, Carl? Can we always find a day, right, and always sum it up in, in your in thoughts a poem. a poem, just like that? I love that structure. I I love that structure. If there's any um, English students uh, or professors. Um, or novelists or poets listening, um, please email us what I thought of that poem, why it's good, why it's bad. So, you know, give us your thoughts uh, on that. I mean, we would love expert opinion, um, poets, um, English professors. Uh, just email us at, at podcast at rickygervais.com. Mm. Now, Carl, apart from being a poet, you are an author now. You have, you've written a book, mm. you know. Which surprised me and Steve, because as Steve said, we, we thought you'd read a book before you actually wrote one, mm. but you've proved us, proved us wrong. And all your teachers wrong, and everyone in the world who thinks you're an idiot. It is actually a very good book. I mean, it, a, a lot of it is transcripts from, you know, the podcasts, uh, but you've answered some of uh, your critics, haven't you? And you've, you've tried to prove some of your theories. Uh, it's everything about Carl. It is, it is like... All the drawings. It, all the drawings. There's new stories, isn't there? I mean, there's so much effort, I can't believe it. He's been working on it for months, and it's out on the 18th of September, but you can order it now, can't you, on Amazon.com and Amazon.co.uk. What's that, what's that book called? It's called The World of Carl Pilkington. Well, thanks very much. Goodbye from me, Ricky Gervais. Goodbye from Stephen Merchant. Goodbye. And goodbye from the little hollow egg headed moron that is Carl Pilkington. Right. Audible hopes you've enjoyed this program. Well, episode two of season three of the Ricky Gervais Show, with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello there. And Carl Pilkington. All right. What's been going on? What's been going on? I've been to hospital. I was rushed to hospital, like emergency and that. I had a uh, tube put up my knob. You had a tube put up your knob? Yeah. What was the story? Uh, kidney stones. Oof. So, shouldn't really be here, to be honest, doing this. It's he said rest and that. Climbing them stairs on the way in is To be just... quite honest, it doesn't look like you're expending a lot of energy at the moment. It's it's like at Zoo keep going, all oh, that sloth move today. Calm down. Yeah, but I had to get here, it's been raining. Yeah. I had to come up the stairs, I had to carry the computer. Yeah. Well that's not entirely true because your girlfriend was carrying it, I saw her outside. Yeah, but but I'm just saying And oh. then you and then you handed it to me and said, Steve, oh, carry God this. Almighty. So... Yeah, I know. That's but... already a lie. Christ almighty. Whinging. Not whinging. I'm in show business. I know loads of people that wake up every day with a sore knob, feeling like they've had their kidneys probed, and they, they you know, they will say they're unconscious. So they yeah. don't whinge about it, they get straight back onto it. They, you know, <laughs> a lot of them on TV now. Yeah, straight back to hosting game shows. <laughs> <laughs> so, you're rushed to hospital. So tell, take us through the take us through the events because it does sound quite dramatic. You started feeling a bit of pain, did you initially? I felt a bit of pain. And I thought, you know, yeah, maybe I just pulled a muscle or something when I've been wrestling with Ricky and that because mm. you don't know what damage is being done. <laughs> uh, so I just think, oh, it, it'll go in a minute, and then it didn't. It got a bit badder. It did. did it got badder, did it? So then got I thought I, oh, I, I was I was crippled. I was lying on the floor in agony, looking on the internet. 
looking for a sort of Still solutions. looking at monkey news. Uh, <laughs> I was just, I just put in like bellyache and stuff and they were saying it can be loads of different things. Um, and I, what I used to do when I was a kid, I used to always just get a cold ashtray and put that on my belly and the coldness used to get rid of the badness. <laughs> Amazing. The cold has got me. Well, what? Like, like a witch doctor. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> this, this, this is like... A witch doctor happens to work in a pub. It's like a, some sort of 5th century remedy <laughs> yeah. written in mud. <laughs> yeah. Coldness doth get away with the badness. Yeah. Uh, why, why specifically an ashtray? Just because they were they sort of old cold. <laughs> <laughs> They're old I cold. Do, I don't know what this is. I, it's, I love this idea that is he... Uh, He's uh, at the operation and he comes round and they're talking to him and uh, his, his girlfriend gets a phone call and, go, and, and they say, uh, Mr Pilkerton's it's got maybe complications, he's just talking rubbish. <laughs> yeah, she yeah. goes, oh good. Yeah, he's back to his old self. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what, 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 is it, why specifically an ashtray? Sorry, because it's old cold, I understand it's old it's, cold. Oh yeah, we understand, we, every, <laughs> everyone who's done a medical degree understands old cold, <laughs> but, but, uh... <laughs> <laughs> old, yeah. old cold belly badness. <laughs> if you want to buy that book, old cold belly badness. It's uh, uh, the, the yeah. history of abdominal surgery by Carl Pilkington. No, it just you know. It, if, so, if but you, you put it in the freezer or something first. You can do if you want, but they're normally cold anyway. <laughs> sort of thick glass, and that it holds the cold. But we're not smoking our house, so I had to use a plate. <laughs> Oh, well, that's madness. A plate's not going to work. Pla Famously, a, pla a plate oh doesn't God, work. Oh, God, no! <laughs> oh, so God. You, put a, a, uh, you put a plate on your belly, but that didn't yeah, do any no, work. That, that yeah. didn't work. So, uh, called Suzanne and said, oh, I'm in agony here. She said, go to the doctors then. Good advice. So... A lot of people have done that straight away, <laughs> as opposed to going through the plate. <laughs> ashtray. ashtray <laughs> <laughs> so, he went to hospital and he went to hospital and he said, have you got an ashtray? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they went no, this, an ashtray. this is no smoking. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, so then we get in a cab and what have you, go there, I have an x-ray. His voice is even more boring than usual, it's isn't it? isn't it? Yeah. Fuck me. And they put me on a drip and everything, give me some morphine and stuff. And found out that I had kidney stones. So that's why I was in hospital. And they get them out by. I can't even. I don't know what's gone on, to be honest. Come I've on. got some tube inside me from my kidney to my bladder. That's helping me stuff get about. That. And so there's a little tube up the end of your knob into you. Yeah, it's not there now. It's right. It's high up. Right. So it's high up between my kidney and my bladder. But why didn't you have the thing where they go in the side? You had the choice to... Because I said to the doctor, I said, I'm not a doctor. I said, what do you <laughs> he think... He went, stop putting yourself down, <laughs> yeah. Carl. He said, we need you in the operating <laughs> theatre now. He just said, you know, I said to him, what, what should I have done? Because he said, if you want, go home um, and we'll get you in again or something. I said, something like that. And I said, no, I might as well have it done properly. Have it done now whilst I'm here. Sorry, the choice was have it done properly or go home. It was it was something like that. He said he said there's there's something you can do, and I said oh flush it out. Um, no, because it's too big. It's something like seven millimeters. And it was it's basically because you don't drink enough water. Yeah. So uh, anyway, I said, what do you think I should have done? And he said, chew up the knob. And I said, mm, not my favourite one of the choice, but if you if that's what you think. So he said, yeah, have that. He did me little diagrams, which didn't help. <laughs> he was like showing. How big like, did he draw your knob? Uh, <laughs> sort of normal size. Yeah, was yeah, it? It was all right. You weren't offended by uh, them. Well, he wanted into detail. It's just you know more the tube and stuff and your yeah. bladder and your. Kidney. What was your ball bag like? Did he draw that? He didn't did... do that bit. He left that bit out. Okay. Right. But, um, but he <laughs> said, oh, "We'll just pop that up there," and uh, and then that's when Ricky turned up to visit. Yeah, uh, came in laughing at me because we sat there in like me underpants and stockings. <laughs> in stockings? Yeah. Yeah. Why were you dressed He was there, in... not, he wasn't in bed, he was sort of out of bed with his little drip, right? He had his little boxer shorts on, just sat there, right, in his pants, right? And he had stockings on. Yeah, because they stop clots or something. They put them on your legs. It's like, you know, when people have got big veins and they go on a plane. Right, uh, yeah. <laughs> You said you're not a doctor. <laughs> no, but I've, I've seen it, because Suzanne's mum did it, and it was, she put them on ridiculously early, like three days before we were going away, and like, <laughs> she'd, she'd never been away before, and it, everything was like over the top, do you know what I mean? She was like, I best put them on. And, uh, so, so I put them on, and they like, I don't know what it is, it's something when you're in, 
when you're under, your blood doesn't move about the same. Right. And it can clot up in your leg. So you wear these tight tights. And I came in to cheer him up, didn't I? Yeah. Was that a nice cheery experience, him coming in? Uh, I had a headache at the time. I think he was a bit stressed out. Mm -hmm. uh, but he's just a man you want at that, at that point. Yeah. Uh, he reassured you, I imagine. Well, it, it's weird how it suddenly all happened quick. It was like, as soon as he came in, it's like they got the finger out. And when I say Not that, literally. I mean, I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, suddenly I was being rushed down to, you know, have me stuff done. And uh, I woke up and there was an Irish woman over me going, are you all right? Are you all right? And I said, oh, it's stinging a bit. She said, I'll give you some more morphine. And I sort of put my head up to have a look at my tackle because I wanted to see... If it was still there. ...what, what was attached to it. Do you know what I mean? Because they said something about they might leave some string hanging out of it so they can pull the tube out. It makes you talk. So, uh, <laughs> so I, had a, I had a look for that. Couldn't, couldn't see any of that. Yeah. Uh, but as you put the morphine in, all the muscles in your body go funny. My head just collapsed. <laughs> Your head collapsed. You yeah, I sort of looked up to look at me stuff, but then she said, "Oh, you just need a little bit of morphine," and she put that in, and I just sort of went, Oof. and then uh, they sent me home about two hours after. Oh. But I'm in agony now. And uh, are you in agony right now as we speak? Yeah, certain. Now, are you a man who's had this kind of hospital experience before? Is this I your whole first go. time? I don't go. Do it to hospitals and stuff because I don't like them messing about. Uh, but it does make you think now, do you know what I mean? Like, life and everything. From, I mean, it's weird how it's all happened in the last month, from seeing that bee sort of die. No, no. Well, not really. No, you, no, 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 no. This is not a near-death experience. It is you a had a routine bit. operation to remove kidney stones because you don't drink enough water. No, I know, but... This is not a shark attack. Yeah, but it's all, it's all, uh, life-threatening, otherwise you wouldn't have to fill out forms, would you, saying... If everything goes wrong, Suzanne can have the house or whatever. And then you, you find out more about the body as well, which has been sort of doing me head in a bit. You're more aware of stuff in your body, which I don't like knowing about. Yeah. They keep taking your heartbeats and stuff, mm. and your blood pressure. I don't like knowing about that. I just like, leave it. It's happening. Don't be messing with it. Stop measuring it. <laughs> Stop measuring it! No, do you know what I mean? That's the same with the knob. It's, it's that thing of, of like, they put that thing That's on. what the anaesthetist was doing when you were under, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. He was comparing the diagram to the actual thing. Oh, God. 